What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another bike buying video. So uh, if you guys didn't see, we recently did a top five long travel 29ers for the year of 2020. And in that video, I'm gonna put it somewhere here. We did a giveaway. We're almost about to give away those two awesome MTB shirts. That video is almost at a thousand likes. I think it's like around 600. So go check out that video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and we're gonna pick two people for t-shirts. But with that being said, we got a lot of questions, comments, concerns, angry messages about why certain bikes didn't make that list. And I should have been a little bit more clear. In my personal opinion, I think long travel means 160 to 180 mils of travel. Seeing those comments, I had to make a follow-up video soon because I felt like a lot of people wanted to know about certain bikes. So here we are. In this video, we're gonna be going over our favorite Enduro 29ers for 2020. If you're cringing and you're like, Mo, why only 29ers? Why not 27 and a half? Do you not think that's a real wheel size? Don't worry, I still think it's a real wheel size. We will have a 27 and a half inch video coming up. And also let us know in the comment section, is there a certain bike category you want us to touch on? Do you want us to go over more budget friendly bikes? I've been thinking about doing like a budget full suspension 29er video like which bikes I recommend there or whatever it is, let us know in the comment section. Always happy to help. Also wanna say we're doing another giveaway in this video. So as soon as this video hits 1000 likes, we will give away a $25 gift card to Worldwide Cyclery. All you have to do is hit that like button and let us know in the comment section, what's your favorite Enduro 29er or what do you wanna see in the next video? Do you wanna see that 27 half or the budget bike buying guide, whatever it is, let us know in the comment section. We'll pick someone as soon as this video hits 1,000 likes. With all of that being said, let's get into our top five favorite Enduro 29ers for 2020. Man, that is a mouthful. Yeah, let's get into the video. So to start off this list, we're gonna talk about a bike that holds a special place in my heart. We're gonna talk about the Giant Rain Advance 29er. Um, the reason I'm so stoked for this bike for 2020 is, man, I just remember that old Giant Rain Advance that I had in, I wanna say 2017. It did have smaller wheels, it was the 27 and a half inch version, but I remember that was my first experience with Maestro suspension. And I would say that's probably what I'm so excited for on the uh, Rain 29, is that Maestro, because in my personal experience, it really does feel like the Magic Link. I was always blown away by just how active that suspension design is on the downhill. It almost feels bottomless, but at the same time, as soon as you point it uphill, it actually wasn't that bad of a climber. I was actually fairly impressed. You still got the added traction on more technical style climbs, but even when I had the shock open and I was sprinting out of the saddle, it almost felt like the suspension design tensed up a little bit to give me a little bit better of a pedaling platform platform, but at the same time, I, that didn't feel the same case when I turned around and started going downhill. Super pumped on that bike. 65 degree head angle. We're still looking at a only 146 mils of travel in the rear combined with a 160 millimeter fork on there. So it doesn't have too much travel there. So you're still gonna get that poppiness in and outer corner. The only thing I'm not really that impressed with is the price point. I've always felt uh, the top of the line builds on these giants don't really make sense. $9,300 X01 with some giant proprietary parts on on there so similar to the s-works enduro just that top of the line build i'm spending nine thousand plus dollars i want like high end everything on there so yeah 9300 x01 doesn't make too much sense the build that i probably would go with and i actually went with on my older giant rain advanced uh is actually the 5649 gx build so yeah we're really pumped on that build you get top of the line suspension gx drivetrain just a solid build overall with that carbon frame. Fun fact about the Giant Rain and me, uh, Perry Kramer actually used to be the rep for Giant Bicycles. This was back when I was working in a bike shop and I remember hitting him up and in bike shops, they definitely give you special deals if you're an employee. And I told him that I wanna get on the Giant Rain Advance. He said, Mo, uh, sign up for this class that you can take to learn about Giant. It doesn't take that much time, you just study it. And we're gonna get you a bike, we're gonna get you a killer deal. We're stoked to kind of get you on the bike. I was like such a bike, I can't say that word because we're gonna get demonetized. I was basically going through a lot of bikes uh, at, like in a short period of time. 
And I remember calling him back like 10 minutes later saying like, hey, I just kind of bought it at shop cost. It was like an extra thousand dollars. I was like, I can't wait. Like I need to ride this bike. And he was like, Mo, you really have no patience. So funny story, Perry Kramer, BMX legend, amazing guy. So I hope you're doing well, Perry. But yeah, so on this list is the Giant Rain 29. So the second bike we're gonna talk about today, and it's also probably one of the fastest Enduro 29ers out there. It's gonna be the Yeti SB150. And I know there is a lot of Yeti tribe people uh, clapping away right now in the comment section. I know Yeti fans are probably some of the most diehard fans. Uh, shout out to, I'm gonna butcher it, Dagoner is his Instagram username. He's just one of my friends and yeah, he's just really hardcore Yeti fan and I just love seeing people support companies like that. So really refreshing to see that. Just a cool community you can be a part of. So like I said, the Yeti SB150 I think is gonna be one of the faster bikes for 2020. So I've owned two Yetis over the years, the Yeti SB6 and the Yeti SB55. Both of those bikes were probably some of the fastest bikes I've owned. And like I said, I attribute a lot of this to the suspension design that Switch Infinity. It really does feel like on the Yeti platform, as soon as as you hit a bump, the bike almost like propels itself forward. That's the best way I can kind of describe the feeling of riding Yeti. They also are bikes that as you start moving faster, the bike gets more comfortable. And that's what I felt with the Switch Infinity where it almost felt like at slower speeds, I was sitting a little higher in the travel. As soon as the bike kind of got going, you got that momentum, you're going faster. The bike started to sink into the travel a little bit. You started to get a little bit more comfortable. And then it was just kind of, you go faster, bike gets more comfortable. And that's what I feel like attributed to that really fast race nature. Now the Yeti SB150 specifically is a 150 millimeter 29er. It has 170 mils of travel up front. Uh, don't let the 150 number fool you. I definitely feel like with Switch Infinity, those bikes tend to act like they have a little bit more travel than they do. 64.5 degree head angle, so a little bit slacker, which I think is to accommodate for how fast this bike feels on the trails. That personal time on this bike, I felt the same thing. Stability at high speeds really tracks well in corners, a lot of that due to that wheelbase. The only downside I'm gonna put here, and man, that's, that's the thing with the Yeti tribe, is they're amazing people, but at the same time, I hope they don't flame me too much. I do personally feel like on the Yeti platform and the Yeti SB150 in particular, if you're the type of rider who you really enjoy a slower riding style, so say you like a little bit more free ride-esque, um, kind of just steep trails at slow speeds. I definitely don't feel like these bikes perform the best in comparison to other bikes in the same category. I feel like at slower speed, the suspension sits a little bit higher. You don't necessarily get all the traction, but like I said, if you're gonna be out there and you're ripping and you're looking for a fast race bike, I definitely think this is a top bike to consider. So the third bike we're gonna talk about today, and man, I know everyone here guessed it because look at this t-shirt. But in all honesty, the reason I have this t-shirt on is it's not the same shirt I wore in the last video. I actually own like three or four of these just because the, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's a Ritmo AF shirt, but look how cool that design is. Apparently, Ibis, when they got this t-shirt made, they contacted the guy who made the Santa Cruz hand to design this. So uh, I know that guy definitely is not a cheap artist and design is just so rad. So I asked for a bunch of these, but I, I sidetrack, I digress. Now, a lot of you guys do know that Ibis does support the channel, so just wanna keep that in mind. But at the same time, I definitely think the Ritmo AF is a strong contender for Hot 29er of 2020. A lot of you guys might also be shocked because we do ride the Ritmo Carbon primarily. Um, I do feel like the Ritmo Carbon fits our riding style, especially for Thailand, where we knew it was not gonna be the gnarliest on the downs. But at the same time, we wanted to really well do everything 29er. The Ritmo AF just kind of takes that carbon Ritmo up a notch. And man, I really do love that bike. Excited to get back to the States to put some more time on it. So for those of you that don't know, the Ritmo AF is a 147 millimeter 29er. It comes in alloy, something that was new to Ibis this year. And they basically made it about a degree slacker. And they also changed the suspension design to make it a little bit more progressive so you can run a coil shock on there. Now, the reason I believe the Ritmo AF deserves to be on this list of hot 29ers for 2020 is a couple of things. Number one, price point. We can't kind of skip price point on this one. 
because basically for $3,100, $3,100, you're getting top of the line DVO suspension, getting a solid build overall, a 1x12 drivetrain, not the best brakes, but at the same time, $3,100. But I think what I'm gonna stress here is top of the line suspension on a solid bike frame platform with DW links. I really do like DW link. This bike has it, 3100 top of the line suspension, and just a solid bike overall with a really modern GO2. So uh, I'm gonna put this bike in the list of hot 29ers for 2020. Now, let's go ahead and stay in that realm of really good bang for buck. We gotta put the YT Jeffsy on here. YT basically studied the market and they're like, man, what should we do with our trail bike? I feel like for a while, YT was kind of getting a little bit more pigeonholed in the enduro full-on DH free ride spectrum. And I feel like the YT Jeffsy really did appeal to that everyday trail user. Not saying this bike doesn't rip. If you guys know my friend Wes Peebles, uh, I'll put his Instagram right here. Guy is an absolute sender, and he had a Jeffsy at one point. He actually picked it over the Capra. So with that being said, it's a 140 millimeter 29er that definitely holds its own on the downhills. In terms of the head angle, they actually went a little bit conservative here, and they went with a 66 degree head angle. So like I said, I feel like YT is definitely trying to appeal to more riders out there, and I feel like this bike does a very good job of that. Another really interesting number to note is a 77 degree seat angle, and I looked at this on paper, I started where that bottom bracket is, that seat angle does look pretty steep. So this thing is definitely gonna be a solid pedaler. We are gonna be doing some videos with YT, testing out some bikes. So we'll definitely keep you guys posted on how this thing does in terms of a long-term review. But for now, I'm gonna say that price point, 5,500 for top of the line, 2200 2300 for their aluminum build is going to put this in the list of hot 29ers for 2020. Now for the final bike on this list, we're going to have to give this one to the Santa Cruz Hightower. I will have to say that the Santa Cruz Hightower out of the whole Santa Cruz lineup is probably my favorite bike. I feel like it's a really solid 29er that can both climb really well and also descend really well. So in comparison to the Mega Tower, which is its more kind of beefier sibling, I personally think that the High Tower definitely packs a punch. Yes, it doesn't necessarily feel as stable as the Mega Tower in terms of like fast, gnarly high speed, but it comes very close. And on the other side, I am gonna say that even though it's not as sprightly, is sprightly a word? We're going with it. As its smaller sibling, the Tall Boy, it does climb really well and is pretty close to that too. So I don't know how Santa Cruz ended up making a bike that climbs close to the tall boy and descends close to the mega tower. It's like, it's almost in two different places, but it's right in the middle travel wise. So 140 mils of travel in the rear, 160 millimeters of travel up front. This thing has a 65.5 degree head angle and it also has a little bit of a longer chainstay sitting at 439. And I think that long chain stay and a little bit of a longer wheelbase definitely adds to the stability of this thing, even though it doesn't necessarily have as much travel. After testing this thing, I really did feel like this was the best all around bike in that Santa Cruz lineup. And if I was to have a one bike quiver and I was a Santa Cruz fanboy, I definitely think I would lean to the high tower. Another pro to this bike as well is the sheer amount of options for builds you can choose from. They have so many different build kits. They also have an aluminum frame option, a carbon C option, and a carbon CC option. So basically a more budget friendly carbon and a top of the line carbon. So three different frame materials to choose from, so many different build kits. And yeah, I definitely think that's definitely a huge pro here as well. But like I said, a really good do everything enduro 29er and I'm putting on the list for hot enduro bikes of 2020. So with all that being said, the list is over. And you guys, please tell me, what did I do wrong? What bike did I not talk about? What bike do you guys want to see on this list? What bike do you want to see us test this year as well? And if you guys know anyone at any companies that like is in charge of bike reviews, we're always open to testing stuff out. It's one thing that I personally love doing. I love trying new bikes. I love geeking out over numbers and suspension designs and all of that thing. So yeah, you guys, if there's a certain bike you want, feel free to reach out to the company to get in touch with us or let us know. We'll try to make it happen on one of 
of our bike tours. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you didn't enjoy it, hit the dislike button. Let us know in the comment section what you guys think. And until next time, you guys, ride awesome. Eww. Thank you.